हेलो एवरी वन सो वंडरफुल टू बी वर्चुअली इन योर ड्राॅइंग रूम्स विद यू थैंक यू अश्विनी एंड किताब खाना बुक्स फॉर पुटिंग दिस टूगेदर सो नाइस टू बी कनेक्टिंग टू ऑल द पोइट्स वर्चुअली इफ नॉट फिजिकली विच इज़ नॉट पॉसिबल राइट नाउ एंड थैंक यू मानसी फॉर टेकिंग एस थ्रू द टेक्निकलिटीज एंड मेकिंग एस गो लाइफ थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू ऑल फॉर बींग हेयर so i was thinking that these are really difficult um disorienting and very disturbing times that we are all going through globally and it's remarkable that we turn to poetry in these times because i guess because uh the universal in the personal gives us comfort and because we're all living in the labyrinths of solitude as we are under a lockdown i'd like to quote octavio paz who said that if society abolishes poetry it commits spiritual suicide so it's a great thing that we're all turning to poetry for at least this one hour in a day uh i'll also be in conversation with uh, melvin i'm just going to i'll just add him i think he's going to join us any moment now Yes Melvin hello how are you Melvin Yes Vinita yes you can you? carry on yeah carry on reading your poem Okay i think i will read one of my poems and then uh, i will just uh, engage with you yeah. conversation Yeah yeah you yeah, carry okay. on All right So uh, the first poem that i chose to read here is on solitude it's on um, Okay because it's so relevant for all of us right now it's titled blue and it's from my book two full moons i swallowed the sky just to feel its destitution gushing into the blue i swallowed all the living that my youth had endured i saw all the blue ushering my heart to a place of warmth like a migratory cream blue breaths filling sighs homeless winds trapped in a sea surge of voices i swallowed all the shadows my throat unfurling on time gathering all the dark so melvin i believe you write in konkani is that right yeah i do write in konkani yeah okay and as a poet uh, under lockdown how are you engaging with the reader all these days can you repeat your question your audio is not audible here okay i was i was just asking you as a poet under lockdown as all of us are yeah uh, how do you engage with poetry these days are you reading and writing more these days in particular uh, to tell you frankly vinita since the lockdown has come into effect huh? i'm not doing much of a writing or reading Okay. <laughs> uh, most of the time, most of the time, I sit quietly and uh, peep out of the window of my apartment. Okay. <laughs> and I started started seeing the coconut trees, the mango trees, the jackfruit trees, the palmyra trees, Love. and uh, you believe me or not, you might find it very silly, but uh, I've started talking to these trees. No, I don't find that silly and at all. I've I've started recognizing their importance in my life. Wonderful. And I uh, also uh, the chirping of the birds. You can hear now the chirping of the birds. I can hear now throughout the day. Right. Absolutely, because there's so much silence. Uh, I think I think this uh, lockdown has uh, given us a kind of opportunity to go on a voyage. to a different space altogether which you have not dreamt before yes perhaps inwards yeah yeah perhaps inwards and also because of so much silence around us you know we are more connected to nature that's and true. see things that that's around. true yeah. Yes. yeah yeah would you like to read one of your poems now yeah yeah i i'm going to read one of my poem which titled as sky bhew sky bhew means uh, neem tree Okay. in uh, probably the word kaibe was come from the kannada word kahi bevu 
in marathi you say kudu kudu nimbu or kadu limbu in marathi you say and uh, if you have visited dubai you come across thousands of neem trees lining up uh, on the both sides of the streets and uh, this poem is about a street called karama where i lived for 14 years and uh, this poem talks about talks about this uh, neem tree their beauty and their bitterness as well and why we need to accept that bitterness to make our lives beautiful That's so i'm good. going to read my poem yeah kai bev karamant kampan kam ko kai bev ache roop ko dekh tam pana mujha mana tam tha mungu bhuku इंग्लैंडे राणी मथ्यार आदल्या शेकड्या छेपे दिसत एकल्या कोण दुसऱ्या अंतरळांतले तुपे वार्या तारवार बसून सोयल्यार पाचवी साथी दिसतीत सावळेक पनल्यान चलून गेल्यार दुखी लेगून पळतीत मका मात्र चोयता चोयता फुलून येता वोड पाणा खणा फकत दिसता तुझी मोल लाग मोड पाना पाना नाचे दिसताय कळना संगीत खंचे आमचा कोणना वाऱ्या शिरा तुका मात्र कळचे देखून देखून जाता पिसो थोडे फावटी सोगणे धन्नी तुवे केल्या पाना करू पाका माकणे जाना हाव जाना हाव काही बेव खोडू शमन करता व्याधी इल्ले खोडू तुई देखून zallo moga shaadi that's my poem yeah kaibeu thank you that's well. yeah, yeah yeah i'm afraid i don't understand konkani but i if you just uh, observed me nodding my head it was because i was enjoying the cadence and the joy with which okay. you were reading and i'm sure okay edition of the poem i'm sure i'll enjoy the words as well so <clears throat> yeah. um i was thinking that this entire you know this whole phase of solitude and isolation and social distancing mm-hmm. has made us slightly more philosophical and we tend to uh, think more deeply about life i guess so that's yeah. why i chose this poem it's titled water is a lesson okay it's also about intense uh, solitariness and intense solitude For years I watched the river its opposite banks like pages of an open book never closing watched the lone fisherman alone on midstream plagued with hunger until the next catch the shallow wooden boat owning his life if there exists a constellation of pain in my veins then it's the one that shimmers like light on water here now gone the next gripping darkness by the feet in murky depths angling for the warmth of sunlight every time breeze ruffles scars true singularity lies in drawing to the middle of the catchment at the break of dawn scan the horizon watch the round ball of fire sluice its face in water and forget that your feet shall ever touch the dry land again know that the haze banks of a damp boat are all the ground you have yeah yeah so melvin i was also wanting to ask you um yeah please go basic question as to what inspires you to write poetry could you could you lead us through the inspiration that drives you to write poetry it it seems very simple as well as difficult question uh when i see or listen to something which really disturbs me a kind of pressure builds up within me and in order to free myself from that pressure i write poetry yeah. so pressure can be seen uh, from positive things also so 
so in a word in in a word poetry is something which gives me freedom can be it can be called as moksha also <laughs> oh wow <laughs> yeah it, it poetry also gives us wings to fly across the borders yes yeah and absolutely and the way you connected with nature and i think you live in a very a beautiful place of uh, of our country you can see you can have a glance here yeah. excellent wonderful yes yeah. i can yeah the lush and green <laughs> yes yes may i request you to read another of your poems please yeah this uh, this my second poem is uh, the title of the poem is marsha such a magne uh, that is a prayer of marshas the marshas is a greek uh, mythological figure who loses his life in a musical battle with apollo uh, apollo defeats him by adding his voice to the sound of a lyre he plays in my poem marshas represents all the talented but unfortunate people who never get a stage in front of the mighty and the financial strong people so i am going to read that poem prayer of marshas pir lok ke din pir lok urana zar us vastantlyan walana urlya fakat vasha chukurko jivit kinche fulana mur lok asta funku kashe pir lok muji khalana sasra adi chiddun gello us vas galyant walana How marshas? How marshas? Apollo cha ponta kharvon melo lo, somsara cha vasha kudkyang sada niras kelo lo. Krishna deva funkre murli, funos gathana, vasha antle gon walu gane, dhulo dubli lana, dhulo dubli lana. That's the poem, prayer of marshas. Okay. well i definitely yeah. got the word <laughs> yeah. right and also i was thinking that um we are all grappling for perspectives in this very rare kind yeah. of position that we find ourselves in and we trying to uh, gain a perspective on what's happening and what we should do with it and what's the way forward and it takes mm. me to my a very short 10 line poem that i wrote also when i was uh in deep sorrow after i lost my father and i was also grappling for perspectives so i'm going to share that with you it's called mm-hmm. gift mm-hmm. it is a gentle tip this white moon my father gave me the night he passed away it hangs under the window every night a farewell gift leaves the skies quietly at dawn to slide into my throat all day some nights it returns chipped halved sliced imitating life scarred like the face of pain but always there like a presence that's never left so that wow. was one wow. short poem thank you mm-hmm. thank you thank you very much yeah it's beautiful yeah Do you also think that poetry offers comfort in a time of crisis? Like you yourself said that when there are pressing issues, when your mind is is grappling with issues and 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 uh, yes. feeling pressure of certain situations, you turn to poetry. Mm. Do you believe? Do you believe that? Um, do you believe that poetry offers us comfort? As a as a poet, yes, we tend to write in time in such times because it gives mm. us a sense. these and self expression but do you think as a reader poetry offers comfort uh, now what exactly crisis is crisis always triggers fear right and uh, it brings along with it a kind of threat to human life so when there is a crisis so we as a normal human beings try to find out ways to come out of this fear and the threat to human life but during these difficult times of lockdown and uh, curfew 
uh, we have limited means and uh, we cannot go out of the house also hence there is no other go for us but to embrace our hobbies and uh, passion so our hobbies and passion can always give you comfort it can be poetry for me and for you it can be something different for some other person i feel for people who are infected and who those who are uh, treating them infected people uh, i feel for them really i feel for them i cannot imagine the kind of fear they are going through i think as poets we need to find out some, some ways to really comfort them if uh, poetry comforts them that is well and good that's what i feel True, true, Melvin. Very true. Would you like to? Your audio is not. Very, yeah, your audio is not uh, very clear. I think some of the uh, uh, people also yeah. they have commented here. Okay. There is problem I, with the audio. Okay, let me try and speak louder. Yeah, I think I should. Yeah, speak please. Louder. Pranalini's comment saying we need to speak louder. Yeah. So am I audible yeah. now? Okay, Melvin. Now Melvin, this okay. is better. Yeah, better. All right, Melvin. Please read a poem, and then we'll talk further. Uh, this is a poem when I came uh, back from the Middle East. Uh, uh, the title of the poem is "Gaun Chapai Amula," which means "At the feet of my village." I'm going to read that. Lam tapas kabar kela, sone zotta long karzala, nimne tuja pai arpodla muja gawa, tuja hatha ni muja mathe uk. सुरेल्या मुझे दिस्टिंग देखचे धैर दी मुयेल्या मुझे हातांक लिखचे त्राण दी कामचे मुझे वेंगे एक पुटलुंचे भाग दी सलवल्या दोनी पायांक ससायची वाट दी थकल्या मुझे नाका लागी परमलाची फुला फुलई बंद झल्या खाना लागी सुरायचे सूर दलई धारून मुझे हृदयांत मैपसाचे खाळीस दी कल मेल्या मुझे उसवासाक अवकासो अवकास दी तुझी माथी ओळखा ना झालो तुझे पाचवे पचय ना झालो तुझो परमळ हुंगी ना झालो तुझे संगीत समजा ना झालो तुझे वाटेर थोंठो झालो तुझ्या मनशांक अनवळखी झालो तुझे स्वभाव एक दोळे धांपले काळजांतले मनशा पोहून गीदांक ओंपले आता तुझेच लागी पावला लांब तपस काबार केला मस्तक तुझ्या पायात दिला गावा मुजा गावा मुजा या दॅट्स इट विनीत दॅट्स इट या व्हॉट व्हॉट वर द लास्ट टू लाइन्स कुड यू ट्रान्सलेट द लास्ट टू लाइन्स दैट यू जस्ट रेड आउट नो एट लास्ट आई आई कुड बिकॉज आई वाज इन द मिडल ईस्ट फॉर सो मेनी इयर्स 14 इयर्स एंड आई द i had gone there to earn uh, kind of kind of gold you mean to make my life better but in the process of making my life better i became iron ore that's what this uh, poem says and uh, i i now i have come back to you oh my village oh my play oh, mera gaon ke bare mein gaon se main batata hu ki abhi i have come back to you now i have finished my tapasya for 14 years now i have given um, kept my mustak my head on your feet yeah. and that's what i am praying yeah okay lovely lovely yeah okay so um why can't you read one of your poems yeah okay let me read one of my poems hmm short poem this one's titled sea yeah. of time sea of time also dedicated to the spirit of isolation as it were okay yeah in the mornings i am nameless faceless a patchwork of bits of yesterday applied to a floating tomorrow hopes make a soft fistula between the fingers i keep crossed for today sunlight arrives like therapy yet darkness lingers in the iris in the spine moments are dust to be shaken off 
floated with riverine intentions into the sea of time. Mm -hmm. And um, I actually wanted to make a sli small comment on this social distancing thing because uh, social distancing is the new phrase that all of us are using. But I also wanted to stress yes, that yes, 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 yes. connected. Let's uh, let's always be emotionally connected at least. So to emphasize mm. that. I'd like to read one of my favorite poets, a very short poem by Aga Shahid Ali. It's called Stationary. Okay. okay. The moon did not become the sun. It just fell on the desert in great sheets. Reams of silver handmade by you. The night is your cottage in dust now. The day is your brisk emporium. The world is hmm. full of paper, write to me. So he says mm -hmm, it very mm -hmm. It's like a message of staying connected if you look at it that way. Would you like to read another poem, Melvin? So uh, one of my friend, uh, William Pice, has uh, translated one of my Konkani poems into English. Okay. I think uh, I will read that. Uh, Last poem, uh, the title of the poem is Malikud. It is again on nature. Uh, it's a, it's a Malikud is a name of a hill crest. It's very close to Mangalore. I stay in Mangalore here. Uh, uh, you, when Konkani means, most of the people understand that it is the Govan language. But uh, right. most of the population, uh, the Konkani population of Goa is almost around 10 to 11 lakhs. That's it. And same number of people. Konkani people stay in Karnataka as well. I see. And okay. uh, yeah, and but we have the minority population here. Konkani population is very minority. Uh, Kannada as well as Tulu language people are more in number here in Karnataka. Uh, so I'm going to read this uh, poem Malikudi, uh, which is about a virgin hill crest which was not visited by. Um, anyone until we had our poetry session there recently. So that's it. That's it about it. And uh, it has all the qualities to cure one's maladies and uh, diseases. That's what I, I felt. Um, nature always is very close to me and most of my poems are on nature. So uh, this poem is goes like this. Just like a warrior entering into the bedroom of a couple just married yesterday without a clue, I arrived atop the Malikudi hill. <laughs> In the quietness of the top, as the rays of setting sun cuddle with the leaves, waves in faraway Netravati river get charged with high tides of envy. Someone's kitchen is filled in aroma of cakes made of jackfruit wrapped in leaves cooking in steaming pot. This aroma wafts the air. These leaves even when on tree infuse energy in exhausted hearts. In the gentle breeze of the twilight, even the tattered bark about to fall are filled with vigor of a 16 year old. <laughs> As the moonlight breaks on the horizon, the dry earth renders twinkling of anklets and the last remains of dry grass dance in gay abandon. Oh, my Malekodi, my heart yearns for you. Oh, my Malekodi, let us keep our sojourn every moment. Oh, my dear Malekodi, hold me for a moment. Oh, my dear Malekodi, put an end to my maladies. <laughs> Thank you, Vinita. Thank you, Melvin. Yeah. I think we'll end yeah. now. I would just before we end, I'd like to read. I need to thank Ashwani also, Ashwani and uh, Mansi and Kitab Khana also. Absolutely. And many of my friends from Dubai and uh, all other places are uh, watching this. I thank them as well. Yeah. Great. So there's this poem by Jane Hirschfield titled, "What For What Binds Us? And I'd like to read it as a parting note. Yeah, please, 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 yeah. Because it just 
proves that all of us are one, no matter where we are and what we are doing and what we are faced with. It's just that all of us are one. There okay. are names. There are names for what binds us: strong forces, weak forces. Look around. You can see them: the skin that forms a half-empty cup, nails rusting into the places they join, joints dovetailed on their own weight. the way things stay so solidly wherever they've been set down and gravity scientists say is weak and see how the flesh grows back across a wound with a great with great vehemence more strong than the simple untested surface before there's a name for it on horses when it comes back darker and raised proud as all flesh is proud of its wounds wears them as honors given out after battle small triumphs pinned to the chest and when two people have loved each other see how it is like a scar between their bodies stronger darker and proud how the black cord makes of them a single fabric that nothing can tear or mend so okay. it's been wonderful to do this with you melvin thank you once again ashwini thank you for yeah. your kind yeah. books and thank you so much mansi thank you everyone yeah. for being thank you everybody yeah think stay safe stay well bye 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 bye